Hey yarn friends. So I've been asked to do some videos about the different knitting machines. And this is two of the small knitting machines that I have. This is the Singer knitting machine and the Addy Express knitting machine. This is the only two small knitting machines that I have experience with. Both of these machines have 22 needles. This machine is considered a toy and this machine is considered professional. This machine is significantly cheaper than this machine. It is very costly. But to start out, say you, you, know, you don't really know if you're going to like knitting machine, but you would like to give it a try just to see if you something you like or if it produces a product that you want to make, I would definitely start with a cheaper machine to see if it's something that you even like. You might try it out and say, this isn't for me. Thank goodness I only spent $20. So this would be a cheaper machine to try out. Okay, I'm going to start with this machine and talk about it a little bit. This is the Singer machine. I did order this from Amazon um, for about 20 bucks. Now I have seen it on Amazon as low as like $17.99 and as high as $39.99. I wouldn't pay $39.99 for it. I would pay around $20. About $22 is the most I would say I would pay for it because I know that you can get it $20, $21, $22, somewhere up in that range. And then if you can, you know, if you have Prime and you can get it with free shipping, that's even better. This machine, like I said, same as this one, it has 22 needles. This machine does not come with a first needle or different colored needle for the first needle. So I took a Sharpie and marked one of the bars and the needle that with it. And I need to remark that because it wears off over time. So I'll just remark that now while we're talking. And I just took a Sharpie and just marked my first needle. And I marked this really well because I want to see that spinning around. And when it's on the other side of the machine, I want to know that that's my first needle coming back around. So if I'm you know, turning and going along, I can see that as it's going around, and I know when it gets here, that's one round, and two, three, so I like to be able to see that as it's going around, so I would suggest marking that, and marking your, the top of your needle, so that you can see that is your first peg. Because when you're making an object and say you need to make 30 rounds, you're going to count those rounds on this machine. One, two, three, and so forth. So it's a good idea to mark that. And just, I was doing that little spinning right there. So I do want to tell this about this machine that um, I've seen some videos where people are just spinning like crazy on the machine. I, I don't do that. I keep it kind of slow pace. I give my yarn a chance to um, get on the needle and get processed in there. I just feel like um, give the machine the best chance that I can give it. So I don't really speed wind. I go at a normal space pace there. And I'm usually watching something on YouTube, usually yarn podcasters as I'm working on this. And so I just glance at my screen and glance at this and just keep up with how many rounds I'm doing. Now this machine, the gears on the inside are plastic. So over time, the plastic could wear down. The pieces could break off and then your machine does not work properly. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I have found that for my little machine here, it likes Red Heart Yarn. I can use Red Heart Yarn in the machine and it'll work pretty good. Um, it does not like Variegated Red Heart and it does not like Green Red Heart. I don't know what the deal is with that, but for some reason I cannot get Green Yarn to work at this machine. <laughs> And from what I understand, each machine is kind of different. You might find that um, your machine likes variegated and green yarn. But I'm saying my machine does not. Also, I'm able to use the impeccable yarn from Michael's Loops and Thread. And also the Vanna's Choice. And I didn't have a Vanna's Choice here with a label on it. But I do find that those yarns work really well for my machine. And sometimes the mainstay brand from Walmart will work in the machines well, too. Um, I think I had the maroon yarn did not want to work, but the other colors did work. So it just kind of varies for each machine. Like, I can't tell you that whatever yarn works really well on this machine because each machine is going to be a little bit different. When I'm working on the machine, if I'm turning and it shows any kind of resistance and it doesn't want to go, it's having trouble with that yarn, I stop immediately. I never force it. Because if you force it, you are going to break those gears on the inside. So if it's choppy and just not wanting to go, I take that yarn out. And sometimes I might have to use my pick and get some of the yarn off. I might have to go this way a few and get some of the yarns off until I can just hold the yarn up and turn and it will just fall off. But there are times when I do have to use my pick to get some yarn off. I would never force a yarn because that is going to tear up the gears even faster. But um, I've had this machine for well over a year. I paid about $20 for it on Amazon. I have made lots of things out of this with this little um, singer. It has served me well. And after using it for a while, I did realize that it was something I enjoyed. And I felt like um, I felt like I did want to have purchase the Addy Express because I could, um, you know, make things with that also. And so, I had saved up some Amazon cards that I had received and realized I had enough to purchase the Addy Express. So, we'll talk about that machine for a moment. And the same thing with the Addy Express. It likes some yarns. It doesn't like some other yarns. But mainly, for my Addy Express and my experience on it, I've used the same yarns that worked for this. And I've had good luck with that. I haven't tried a lot of different yarns because um, I'm used to using what I was using on this anyway, and that's what I usually have on hand, so that's what I use. Now, this machine has metal gears on the inside, so it will last a lot longer. And also, this machine comes with three black pegs. The other pegs are white, but the first three are black. Now, I did mark this little bar here, so as it's going around, I can tell when it's about to get back to my first peg. So, even on this one, I marked this. Now, this machine does have a counter, and so it's on number 10 right now. I'm not sure if you can see that, but as it rolls around, it changes to 11, and so it keeps up with my rows. But there are times where this little counter has a little glitch in it, and it might jump. When it hits 11, it might say 11, 12, and then it might say 12 and 13. And So I count my rows anyway when I'm using this. I don't rely on the counter all the way because it has been known to jump. Now, if I'm making two of the same thing and it's one row off, that's not a very big deal. But if it's 
jumping every time uh, my project you know wouldn't be the same so both machines do have the option to do a tube or a flat I've only used the tube I haven't come across a project or purpose for needing to do a flat panel just I can see where that would be useful to some people with certain projects but the projects I make I just use the tube but you can just switch that up and make flat panels and like I said I don't have any experience with that yet but um, I know that lots of people do have great experience with it this machine is well over a hundred dollars like I said, I saved up some Amazon cards that I was receiving, and that's how I purchased this. I loved this little machine here, and I just knew that one day it was going to wear out. Now, I can still use this machine just fine, and I do at times. If I'm working on a project on this and I haven't finished it, and my yarn is still on here, I will grab this little machine to do another quick little project on. The fabric that these both of these machines produce is going to be very comparable um, in size and the consistency of the fabric because they're both 22 needles and they're both going to produce a fabric that is kind of a um, loose knit. It's not a very tight knit. It's um, but it's a solid fabric. I'm not saying it has holes in it. It doesn't have gapy holes, but it does produce a um, loose knit fabric. So if you're, you know, interested in knitting machines, but you don't want to take the plunge to spend over $100, <coughs> this little machine at 20 bucks, <coughs> excuse me, is a good way to jump in and see if you enjoy making things with a knitting machine. And like I said, my main my main point or tip would be to be very easy with it. And if it doesn't seem to want to turn, stop immediately. Take that yarn off and you can try again. One second, sorry. <clears throat> I myself will try yarn up to three times before I deem that yarn not compatible. If I try it three times and all three times it did not work, then I say that yarn is not compatible with my machine. Now that particular yarn might work great with your machine. You just have to try different things and see. I make lots of stuffies, plushies, um, different things like that with these machines. And I've made lots of scarves, preemie hats. All types of little things like that. And these machines are great for that. So if you jump in and you want to get the little Singer machine. I think it's a good beginner machine. And you might use that machine. You know, like I've had this one well over a year. And it's still going fine. But like I said, I'm very, very easy with it. I don't ever force yarn. And I go at a slow pace. And the same with this. I've seen people who just, um, they'll hook a drill up to it. And they have that machine just going and going and going. And I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. I'm not really saying that. I'm just saying that I don't go that fast when I'm using it. I like to give the yarn a chance. And I feel like the faster I go, um, it's all just going to work faster together. And... The yarn might not have a good enough chance to catch and go to all the right places it needs to go. So my suggestion would be take it slow and easy. Um, that's about all I have to say about the knitting machines. I, these two, you know, comparing them. I've been asked to do some knitting machine videos. And so that is coming up right after I film this one. I'm going to film making a project on this machine, and so that will be coming up pretty soon, too. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more videos 
about the knitting machine, please give this video a thumbs up so that I'll know that that is an interest. But um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments below, and I'll try to answer your questions. But I do think that um, there's a purpose for the knitting machines. And they are serving a purpose for me, and I'm enjoying them very much. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.